Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. S represents the sample standard deviation. So of course we need a symbol for, that's a statistic, right? Because it's referring to a sample. The corresponding population standard deviation, the parameter is sigma. This formula describes a procedure. If you would like, you can look at this slide for how to do it by hand. Step one, create the table with the columns for the data, the deviations, and the squares of the deviations. In other words, you're gonna have an X column, an X minus X bar column, and an X minus X bar squared column. List the data and find the sum and the sum and the average of the data or the mean of the data. So you got to find X bar. Okay, then you're going to calculate the deviations. So you're going to have to calculate X minus X bar a bunch of times. It is a good idea to add up the deviations column because it should add up to zero. So that's kind of just to check that you're doing well so far. Okay, then you're gonna go to the column, the next column, square all the deviations that you just found. So you're gonna fill in the column x minus x bar squared by squaring all the numbers you just found, and then you add them up. Now you're gonna take the sum that you just found and divide it by n minus one if this is sample data, or divide it by n if it's not. Usually it's sample. And what you just found is S squared, the variance. Now you take the square root of that and you get the standard deviation. So it's a procedure. It's also a procedure that your calculator can do much faster than you. So you only should really work this out by hand once or twice or if I ask you to do it. <laughs> Otherwise, just do it on your calculator. So um, let's do this by hand once. So what is the first thing you need to do? Create a table and or add all the numbers. You can do it in either order. I like to set up my table first so I have it to look at. So I'm gonna have an X column. I'm gonna have an X minus X bar column. And I'm gonna have an X minus X bar squared column. This kind of guides me and reminds me what I need to do. All right now I'm going to enter my data values. I like to have them listed so I can add them up. I have my data values listed out in the X column. I am adding up the data values and getting 518. I find my mean, which is going to be 518 divided by the number of data values, which is 7. And then that turns out to be 74. Is that what you got? So now we're going to go through and row by row, we're going to subtract the data value minus the mean. The data value minus the mean. The data value minus the mean. So you should get negative 23, negative 11, 1, 3, 4, 10, and 16. Okay, what's the next column again? The square of the deviations. That's right, the square of the deviations. So you take each one of these values and square it. Remember when you square a number, it makes it positive. So it should be 529, 121, 1, 9, 16, 100, and 256. For our formula for the standard deviation, we need the sum of the squares of the deviation. So you add that column up and that should give you 1,032. Is that what you got? Now remember, we had two formulas. We have the variance, x minus x bar squared over n minus one, which is s squared is a symbol for that because it's the standard deviation squared. The standard deviation is what? The square root of all of that. What you just, oh, I forgot my summation. What you just found is the sum of all the squares with that number, 1,032. First, before we find the square root, we need to, it's a kind of average, so we're gonna divide by the number of data values, but minus one, yeah. So first you divide it by n minus one, which is six, and then that gives you the 172 there. And so then you take the square root. So you should get about 13.1. Now, what is that telling us? That's telling us that most of the data values should be within 13.1 units of the average 74. So 74 minus 13.1 is going to be what, 60.9? 
and 74 plus 13.1 is going to be 87.1. So if you look at our data values here, most of the data is within that range from 74, which is the average. Standard deviation is when you square root it after. That's why we call this S and the variance S squared. Yes. The answer on the quiz, if you were asked to find the mean and standard deviation, the mean would be 74, that's your X bar, and the standard deviation would be the 13.1, yes. If it asked you for the variance, what's that? 172, it's the part under the square root. All right, let's use our calculator to do the same thing. Okay, we're gonna, step one, we're gonna clear the data. So you go second exit stat. Exit stat is right above the stat bar key. So now your data is cleared. So now step two, we're gonna enter the data. So we have to go to the data button. So you hit second stat, the data button, and you see one bar on your screen and you hit enter. Okay, what's next? Hit data, that's right. And when you hit data, you're gonna enter your data values. Notice the frequencies are all one in this data set, so all you have to do is arrow down past the frequency to put in the next data value. So you put in 51, arrow, arrow, 63, arrow, arrow, 77, arrow, arrow, and so on. Okay, once your data values are entered, to calculate the standard deviation, you're going to select stat bar, just like we did to find the mean, and then arrow over to SX, the standard deviation of the data, the sample standard deviation of the data, SX. And what do you see there? Okay, so it's the same value we found before, right? 13.1. Now, next to that, if you're still on the stat bar screen, next to SX, what do you see? Sigma X. Sigma X. What do you think that is? Yeah. If it had been population data and not sample data, we would have to use Sigma X. So arrow over to that just to see for comparison. Is it different from 13.1? Yes. It's smaller. It always will be because you're dividing by a bigger number, n, instead of n minus 1. And the reason you're able to do that is we're more confident about where the data is positioned because we know all the information. When we do sample, we leave it bigger because we're not sure. We're n okay, it could be between here and here. We're not really sure. So it has to do with our confidence level, why we... I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like it.